Hey, what's up? I'm Al Cox. I play games, make games, and everything in between. And today we are checking out Goldbox Smart Assets, Spin Helix, Twist Cylinder, Position Cube, Rotation Cube, and Scale Cube. Most of these are just simple objects with one or maybe two nodes. Understanding how these objects and nodes work make building a game with no code that much easier. So let's jump in. If you find this video useful please like and subscribe and hit that bell as i make these videos to help me helps you get better at game development goldbox 3 can get complicated first asset i want to talk to is the spin helix we just go into the asset you see it's literally just the move rotate node causing the object to spin let's go into the 3d world grab this helix Maybe move this all the way down here so it doesn't look kind of weird. And hit play. There we go. Checking out the spin helix node. And I believe it has physics. Let's take a look. Physics. Whenever you have a unique shape like the helix, you want to make sure that there is a collision mesh. Most of the time, you'll be able to use a mesh of a cube, a sphere, a cylinder. But in this case, you want mesh. And a mesh that just goes into and create boundary around that object. From here, I just want to jump into the role template to give you a better idea of exactly how that mesh works. So let me remove these cones, camera angle, let's add the debug, and let's get going. Here you can see the mesh around the helix, just rotating and spinning. We can go into the node itself over here and make it spin the other way. I'm also curious to see what happens if we were to change other X, Y angles, just to, just to see, whoa, I'm not saying and this is a game some cool stuff is happening here Ooh, whoa where's the ball go okay so you can hit it up this is not any kind of practical gameplay it's pretty cool to see and fun to mess around with 3d physics in the xyz direction next with cylinder let's just go into the object right now just the cylinder object with the twist to rotate interesting so it starts out with x and Y with invert of Y and screen X, world Y, screen Y, world X. I believe these move in that direction. Let's go ahead and take a look. The object has no physics, so it won't interrupt here and go in. I want to make it a little bit more sensitive. It's actually a little bit difficult to tell, so let me go ahead and add some cubes to it. And you know, since we're doing 3D, we should have it all angles take all these cubes we put it under the twist cylinder so set this to 90 cool and all of them will be a child okay so now let's move left to right so this is in the x y and then this is up and down also i believe this is the z axis or is it the y axis let's go into the twist cylinder screen x invert y so screen y is on invert these get real confusing real quick so it's important to play around i wanted to move left so let's was it Y? Does that work? And maybe I'll move this to X, left to right. Yeah, so this is what I want. So screen X, I set to world Y, and then I can move it left to right. Now I want it screen Y to move forward and backwards, but it kind of does, like here it does. Then if you go over here, it doesn't. This is interesting. So let's go back to world X, forward, back, left, right, forward, backward. Yeah, I don't like invert on this. This is the mechanic that I use to create my little world in my Buildbox Game Jam. Very cool feature, simply by going to the camera, moving out, you know, you can do a lot of cool things with this. Added a bunch together. I mean, that just looks cool in 3D, a little bit trippy. <laughs> I like it. That is the twist cylinder. Pretty straightforward. Currently has no physics. The 3D model, you know, a little difference on the scale. But this asset is straightforward. Getting to know these assets will just help you in your game dev process so that you can just create from, from the node instead of going here into the smart assets to create whatever you're trying to create. Now the position cube is probably one of these assets you're gonna be using all the time. Got a lot going on, it's very useful. The only thing I would change about it is make it similar to the 
float platform. I'm gonna, I'm gonna load the float platform so we can take a look at both these smart assets. Here we got the position cube. In the example we saw before, it's primarily used as an enemy. You wanna wake up, there's no distance here. And then here it moves in the X category for about two seconds, only does it one time. Whereas in the float platform uses the position animation, but it loops itself so it goes over and over again. The position cube is not designed to loop. However, if you did want it to loop, you can easily grab it and create a loop within itself. Position cube, change the background to hot green, move it up over here, and let's take a look. Here you can see they just move, so it doesn't look like it loops. Oh, you know what? It's the single launch. Single launch, disc click that. You want to disc click it. X in the four direction, second one, X in the negative four direction, and here we'll just see it go back and forth. Super useful, and if you want, you can add physics to it. Very straightforward. I like adding the second position animation. Watch out for that single launch. I have missed that checkbox more than a few occasions, so it can get really frustrating if you forget about that single launch button. Simple, smart asset, very useful. This is probably one that you would use all the time. You don't need to go to the smart asset library to grab this. You can just go over here, grab action, add position animation. You know, here we got the Y direction to copy it. Y direction, negative two, loop them. You know what's different here? This one does not have is delta. So I'm curious to see what the big difference is. Let's go ahead and move this here and unclick is delta. So it's up and down. Oh, ooh. I mean, that's really cool. I don't know what's going on here. Step one, let's undo everything and go back to this and select is delta. I want to see what is really going on. So good. So is delta causes it to move almost in a weird interesting so the target is x4 is delta delta is change since it's not a change of x4 it's to the x4 position y0 zero, zero. oh maybe that's it yo i'm gonna put this at, at x4 four, four, okay. And then I'm gonna go into the position cube, put that at four, four, and negative four. See what happens, okay. Then that only happens once, fascinating. And then what if I loop it, but, oh, and then maybe I can move it to like, okay, let's see what happens here. Goes to one and then other, okay. So this is really cool. I'd have to take a moment and think about in what ways I could apply this. But you've seen it here, the position animation is different in the smart asset of the position cube that is underneath the actions position animation because that one does not have is delta. This may change down the line as BuildBox progresses, but for now, this is worth knowing. And this is why I go through all these assets, just to see exactly what's going on, how they work, so that I know if I wanna add something like that into a future game of mine, let's say I have like five different objects, five different keys, and I want all those keys to go into a single keyhole, the position animation node in the position cube would be perfect for that. All right, next we're going into rotation cube. Rotation cube is almost identical to position cube, but instead of position animation node, we're gonna be using position rotation node. So let's take a look. Another is delta. I'm curious to see how this works. And because right now is delta means change, I'm gonna duplicate this animation node by hitting S change the x to 90 to negative x 90 duration three seconds oh whoa 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 not there we want once the animation is done to go here and to loop itself now, i got a lot of stuff going on here let me go ahead and select all this and delete grab a ground and grab a rotation cube copy paste copy paste has got to be one of the best functions in buildbox you can copy and paste everything now that i got the scene set up the way i would like it let's take a look at this rotation cube right now it's floating in the air let's bring it down and here we go no physics i want to change that right away and add physics dynamic mm, dynamic Definitely looks more natural, but let's just change it to kinematic for now. And right now it's rotating for X, so that's to the right. And I'm gonna actually want it to rotate. Well, let's take a look. So X of 90, and change the duration to one second. 
Okay, cool. Here, it doesn't look like it loops forever. There's no single launch, which is that cool, because I want it to loop forever. Let's go here and get rid of the wake up spawner. Sometimes that helps. Refresh. Okay, so it doesn't go forever. That's kind of a bummer. Here we can clearly see how the rotation cube and the position cube, while very similar, have different abilities such as single launch and is delta. One thing I just realized is we should probably check the, the action node to see if it's the same as the rotation cube because build box sometimes there's a lot of inconsistencies and I find checking everything. Here we go, look, look. Here there's a single launch, but then there is no is delta. So again, important things to know. If you want that is delta, you're gonna need to use the rotation cube for now, unless that gets taken away later. But in the 3.02 version, it's there. So let's go ahead and undo these. Oh, see that? Spawner, go to this and duration one in and out cube. Let's S for copy, unconnect the node and loop it. Changing to a X of 90, negative 90 and forward or backward forward. Oh wait, no, I said it's a single launch. Okay, so let's unclick single launch and come on, go forever. Keep going, keep going. We have it. That is great. Now that I got that to work, I want to take a look at this is delta and see what I can do. Unclick it, create two different objects, space them out a little bit, select that pin, see if that does anything. Okay, cool. That's what it should have been doing in the first place. I don't know what the pin does. It wasn't working a second ago, I swore, but I don't think the is delta is any different than the angles don't look any different, but if I unclick this pin, then that's different. I'm not exactly sure what the pin does. Maybe someday there'll be documentation and we will all know. What do we have next? The scale cube. Now again, with all these other cubes, the scale animation node exists here under the action category. So let's grab it. And the first thing I wanna do is look at the difference between the two. So we can see that the scale cube has is delta and the scale animation on the side bar does not have is delta so if you need is delta you're gonna want to grab the scale cube and we'll play around in a second to see what happens if there is no delta but for now let's make the cube loop and we're gonna set a time of one second only because i ain't got time for three seconds grab the scale cube here press d to copy i'm gonna make this one half the size just to see if scale cube no physics wake up and we have some looping single launch let's get rid of single launch i wanted to just do it forever Okay, stop. Well, I gotta stop. <laughs> funny, funny, funny. Okay, so the scale animation is set to get bigger by two, and then it's set to get bigger by two again. I meant to put negative two here, and I'm gonna go back into the world and put these objects in different locations. Camera view, back up, see one of these. Make this one a lot bigger, and let's go back. Okay, so look at that. So they all go to the same size. So they, the different sizes, to begin with, but then they all end up the same size. So let's move this camera angle. Oh, wow, that's cool. So we can take a look <laughs> while it's happening. I love this. This is just very cool to look at. So yeah, they look like they all become the same size eventually. You can add physics. If you do add physics, I'm pretty sure you want to do kinematic. I'm not even sure what would happen if you did dynamic. I'm curious. The sets of dynamic, and if you noticed, they actually interacted with the ground in a way I was surprised to see. If I move it here, it's currently set up to expand almost like a balloon, but if you put it towards the ground, it tries to expand, but it will hit the ground, which is a physics object, so it'll have to move up and watch. See? And now it's higher up to the ground. Very cool to see. And now let's play with the is delta. I'm just gonna unselect it. Let's get rid of the loop. And here we go. I don't know if I noticed anything. Let's go ahead and add a loop. Okay, is delta, is delta. Y2222, two, 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 negative two, negative two. Three, four, angle. Let's see what happens. Whoa. Okay, so it actually goes in, but 
That's really cool. It takes the objects and flips it inside out. Let me move it over here, X to the Y, zero, and just do four. So what that means is it will scale the object to this scalability. This target delta now becomes literally the scale of the objects. X2, Y2, Z2. All these objects, as you notice, are different sizes. I'm going to exaggerate that like by doing this. Okay, so hit play, they all become the same size, and then they go back to another size. Very important, very useful. This becomes the scale of the object. And how you want to change that, you just need to deselect its delta on both of these, and you can scale a cube to whatever kind of position you want, and then rescale it to another position, as opposed to balloon, inhale, exhale. This is just a reformation of the object to a different scalability. The way I've set it up, you can rescale it and loop itself. I feel like something in this scenario you may not want to loop. When it comes to making a game, literally anything is possible. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the Y to a 5, the Z to a 1. Just take a look so it becomes like a wall. Okay, yeah. Oh, I almost felt like that was going to fall over. You know what? Let me do something cool here. I need to add a ball that a character go into the 3d world i'm gonna make these into almost like dominoes everything is going to change to be a x width of two a height of five and a depth of one we're gonna make this bad boy yellow physics doesn't matter here we'll just do dynamic i really like when incandescence is on just because it makes things look a little cartoony and this will have a touch move no balance Math of 10. I'm gonna add a timer delay and, and then a movement of move in the Z direction. Negative one. Use a camera view. I guess I guess this works. Let's see what I've done in action. Okay, almost like a domino, and then the ball is moving really slowly, so that's not good. Set it to 10. We're gonna wait one second. Kind of like a domino and close to what I was thinking, but to be even better, I'm just gonna have it also move up in a wide direction so it shoots up from the ground. Okay, we're gonna make it go up to 10. And everything falls over. That is the scale cube. Understanding how these smart assets work is super helpful. There is a difference between what is in the smart asset and what is in the sidebar under action. Knowing this difference can help you be a better game developer. If you have any questions or comments on what you would like to see, please let me know. I'm always curious because I believe if I can help you, I can help me. So until next time, peace.